Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Pharmacology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a patient care scenario, and your goal is to develop a treatment plan that emphasizes pharmacological management. For an extra challenge, I'll be placing a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. When the time is up, we'll do a scenario walkthrough, and I'll give you my treatment. Enjoy the card, and good luck. Three, two, one. Now taking care of this patient in real life would make any provider nervous. This is a very complex scenario. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in a little bit closer detail. You're dispatched to a private residence for a 64 year old female complaining of shortness of breath and weakness. Your patient is alert and oriented and reports a history of dilated cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 20%. Physical examination reveals lower extremity pitting edema and coarse rawls are heard in all lung fields. She has been unable to afford her daily medications. Your partner attaches the monitor and obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure 84 over 36, heart rate 104, respirations 42, SpO2 89% on room air, and a blood sugar of 164. Now what makes this patient so complex is the fact that they're in heart failure, have pulmonary edema, but they're hypotensive. Normally we would treat these patients with things like diuretics, with things like CPAP, and that would be it. But because our patient has a history of dilated cardiomyopathy, which occurs primarily due to uncontrolled hypertension and causes the heart to get larger, forcing usually the left ventricle to become stretched out, have scarred walls, and be less effective at pumping. Her ejection fraction is 20%, which makes this a severe form of cardiomyopathy and heart failure. An ejection fraction, sometimes abbreviated as EF, is the percentage of blood that is pumped out of your left ventricle with each beat. Now due to its physiology, the left ventricle will not completely pump out 100% of the blood in it with each beat. Normal ejection fractions for healthy individuals range between 50 and 75 percent, and usually an ejection fraction below 25 percent is considered to be severe. Treatment for these individuals is fairly limited. Medications like ARBs or ACE inhibitors are the primary mainstay of treatment. However, in this advanced stage of cardiomyopathy, placement of an LVAD and then eventual transplantation of a new heart are the outcomes. Management of this patient in the field is going to involve a couple of different higher level concepts. So let's go ahead and take a look at those now. So I'll begin my treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe BSI IVO2 monitor. I'll definitely then wanna perform a 12 lead ECG on this patient. Now, as my patient is in fluid overload, I would usually move straight to something like CPAP or nitroglycerin or Lasix. However, they are too hypotensive to do that. So I must first actually increase their blood pressure in order to then 
diurese them effectively. I could do this by administering conservative IV fluid boluses of 250 to 500 mLs, but I don't want to do that too often because I don't want to fluid overload them anymore. So earlier initiation of vasopressors here would be appropriate. Dopamine is a good choice, and dopamine is dosed at 2 to 20 mics per key per minute, and this is an IV infusion. But the preferred vasopressor, if you have it, is dobutamine. Dobutamine is dosed at 2 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute IV infusion. Dobutamine is preferred here because it's a little less taxing on the already strained heart muscle of this patient. Once I've gotten the blood pressure up to acceptable levels, I'll then administer furosemide, 40 milligrams, slow IV push, and then nitroglycerin applied as a paste to the chest, and this will be at 0.5 to 1 inches. Now a little bit of a, a pro tip here, if you will, for furosemide dosing. Generally, you'll double whatever dose the patient takes at home orally. So if they take 40 milligrams at home twice a day, you'll give them a bolus dose of 80. If they take 80 twice a day, you can give up to 160, but I wouldn't recommend that without at least touching base with medical control. The only reason I'm saying start at 40, you can always give more, and we don't want to bottom this patient out too quickly. Beyond the diuresis, I'll then, if necessary, apply either CPAP or BiPAP to allow that fluid to be pushed out of the lungs and into circulation. And of course, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to head over to my channel for more. And while you're there, check out my other videos on static cardiology as well as pro tips, and then of course my other static pharmacology videos. And please don't forget to subscribe. It really does make a difference when you guys are subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate it. Well, until I see you next time, keep washing your hands and have a good rest of your night.